Okay, we're going to look on this page at stem cells and specifically hematopoietic stem cells. And how blood cells form. So the word hema means blood and poesis means formation. A stem cell is a cell that is undifferentiated. It can become a wide variety of cell types. And in this case, the stem cells that we're looking at differentiate into one of a variety of kinds of blood cells. Now where is this happening? You got it, bone marrow. And specifically, um, flat, flat bones, or sometimes irregular flat bones, so the pelvis, the sternum, are two common places that a bone marrow sampling can be taken. So hematopoietic stem cells differentiate a little bit to become either something known as a myeloid stem cell, I'm going to write that in uh, orange, or a lymphoid stem cell. So they have now chosen a path. Ones that go down this path can become eventually red blood cells or a bunch of different kinds of white blood cells. Ones that go down this path can now only become lymphocytes. That means that they are either going to become T lymphocytes or, put a little space there, B lymphocytes. just in very broad strokes, kind of an overview. There are various kinds of T cells, but they are all involved with organizing, directing, I'm gonna use the word marshalling, immune attack. So some of them can directly kill cells Others alert all the different other different kinds of immune cells, and some of them specifically uh, turn on or activate B cells, and then B cells eventually, when they're turned on, can make antibodies, and antibodies are large proteins that stick to antigens. Now hopefully the antigen is on a pathogen, not on part of you, in which case it would be autoimmune. Now the training for these kinds of cells these lymphocytes, I'll go ahead and highlight that, occurs in the lymph organs. a little blurry. So training for the lymphocytes begins in the lymph organs, especially in an organ called the thymus. And 
and the thymus degenerates after childhood, so maybe somewhere around age 10. So what this means is that the training that your lymphocytes get in childhood is going to be a huge determinant of your health, both fighting infection and avoiding autoimmune disease as an adult. And uh, a proper training will prevent autoimmune or allergy attacks. if they're trained hard and properly. Basically what that means is that if you get uh, many exposures to the proteins and foreign substances in your environment. simple way of thinking about that might be desensitization. The more that your lymphocytes are exposed to the normal substances that are in your everyday life throughout childhood, then the more likely that they will be trained to properly recognize and attack pathogens and to avoid attacking yourself. And any um, lymphocytes that attack inappropriately are destroyed. But how are you going to know that they're responding inappropriately if you don't have lots of different um, exposures going on? Then you're not going to know you have a problem until it's too late. Okay, so that's one pathway. That hematopoietic stem cells can differentiate into lymphoid stem cells, all of which will become either a T or a B cell. Now let's look at the myeloid stem cell line. This can further differentiate into either an erythropoietic stem cell, you can probably hear right in there that that is going to make red blood cells, or the other kinds of white blood cells. So gran it could either become uh, granulocytes, which would be eosinophils, basophils, or neutrophils, all of which are important white blood cells. So white blood cells other than lymphocytes. And that would then include monocytes. Remember, those are the ones that when they're activated, they become phagocytic macrophages. And then another one, I'll put this in a different color, maybe black, megakaryocytes. So they are, uh, they do come from this line, but then they become fragments. They're actually cell fragments in their, their platelets. and they can go from being a smooth cell fragment to a sticky and spiky activated platelet that helps in clotting. All right, now we're last, but certainly not least, let's look at the erythrocyte stem line. So the first thing that it will differentiate into from an erythropoietic stem cell is called a normal blast. If you were to look at a normal blast under the microscope, you would see that it is a cell with a nucleus and has lots and lots of ribosomes visible. So it's got a nucleus and it's got ribosomes. And that word normal blast means a normal bud. And during this time that it's a, a normal blast, the nucleus 
transcribes millions and millions of hemoglobin mRNA. Hemoglobin mRNA. Then the ribosomes in the cytoplasm translate those into protein. When it's all said and done, a typical red blood cell will have about 250 million hemoglobin per red blood cell. And each one of those can carry four oxygen. So you can have a billion oxygen molecules carried by one healthy red blood cell. Okay, now the next step involves the ejection of the nucleus. Bye-bye. The nucleus goes bye-bye to lighten the red blood cell. And that's where it can start to take on its biconcave shape. Easier for it to circulate. But if the nucleus is gone, that means that the DNA is gone, so no more transcribing can occur. However, there will still be lots of ribosomes that are finishing up the translation. So we call this one a reticulocyte. Reticule means a network. So you can see lots of little dots within this one that are the ribosomes. So the remaining ribosomes, or the remaining mRNA, is translated into hemoglobin by the ribosomes, by the remaining ribosomes. And then um, it does begin circulating. Well, let's all do it like this. So it begins circulating. So in your blood, you have reticulocytes, and those are basically immature red blood cells. And it takes about two days for the ribosomes to finish being degraded. And now it's called an erythrocyte. And you no longer can see those. And then it can live for about 90 to 120 days, and then it's recycled. The parts are recycled. Mostly by the spleen and the liver. And remember that the liver conjugates the bilirubin that's an end product of this. Sorry, I got so off the side there. And so if someone gets jaundice, it's because their liver is not conjugating bilirubin appropriately. Where does the bilirubin come from? It comes from the breakdown products of the um, red blood cell. So this whole process, let's see if you can, um, I'm going to put a big bracket all the way from normal, well, actually from the top of this to the bottom. So you can see I started my bracket at erythropoietic stem cell and ended it down at the erythrocyte. And this whole process takes two to three weeks. So if you have a hemorrhage or have surgery or give blood, it takes two to three weeks to replenish the red blood cells that were lost.